Surprise, I am covering the Volkswagen ID Buzz reveal. The concept came out in 2017 and I've been waiting for this. It's been a slow, slow grind. If you guys know me <clears throat> fairly well, I love minivans. They, they're like the most practical vehicle out there. They're the most bang for your buck vehicle you can buy. <clears throat> and they're starting to handle better too, which is pretty exciting if, if you want to give it some beans. Now, ID Buzz, from my understanding, when it becomes available in America will be next year, 2023. I think it's going to hit Europe first, probably by the end of this year. From what I'm hearing, it's rear wheel drive to start. And I just like the ID4, right? Wasn't the ID4 rear wheel drive to start and then they added uh, the all wheel drive setup? I think that's what's going to happen here, maybe a year later. So 2024, maybe we get the, the Pro with the all wheel drive. And then in 2025, I'm hearing that they're going to add a camper van variant. And gosh, I can't imagine how expensive that's going to be. But thanks, guys, for coming out it's gonna be um it's gonna be fun i typically don't cover volkswagen um if you saw like just a week ago i put up the review for the gli um which was totally unexpected i didn't ask for the vehicle fleet my press fleet here that's just what they had available they gave it to me i had a lot of fun driving the 6p manual the ea 888 uh two liter turbocharged engine thing was pretty quick has shitty tires, excuse my language, it's live stream, so I'm a little bit off the cuff here, but had terrible tires on it. Those Kennergy Gs from Hankook completely robbed the car of the fun I tried to have in it. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the comments. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, let's see here. Do I have any other, other side notes that I haven't mentioned? Looks like seating is going to be seven standard, but I'm sure there's going to be variants for less seating. I hear Europe might only be getting six seats. That doesn't make sense, but they, I mean, they'll make the vehicle to the market where it makes sense for them. Um, there's going to be rear facing seats, but from the sounds of it, that could be an American only thing. Hopefully we get some more clarification on that. Um, to me, why don't you just have like a lever that rotates the seat? Then you can have them facing each other. You can have them facing the back. You can have them facing the center of the vehicle. So we'll see there. Um, the base is the base engine, or should I say motor? Is it's going to be? It's just going to be the ID4 setup, but different battery sizes, from my understanding. Uh, so we're going to take the ID4, the 201 horsepower, 229 pound feet of torque zero to 60 is more like nine and a half seconds because it's bigger and a heavier battery pack um range what i'm hearing is around 250 miles for the base car and that has uh, i, I want to say 77 kilowatt hours um available so the battery packs i think in the mid to low 80s in terms of complete volume um pricing if the id4 starts at 41 it's probably going to be 45 to upper 40s starting at upper 40s would be a guess now they'll eventually bring this setup here roughly 300 horsepower now the concept when it came out in 2017 had 275 kilowatts which is over 300 horsepower um and it had 111 kilowatt hour battery, which I think is still the plan for some of the higher spec models. Um, and 270 miles of range, even with the dual motor. So it's, it's, oh, and then we also have pictures. So let me pull up these pictures. So these were released to us uh, just this week from Volkswagen as well. Some of them were on Twitter. So hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, you can see it. So we got some orange interior, orange accented doors here. Uh, I like, it's like a creamsicle is what it reminds me of. Uh, let's see, what, what else do we have? Uh, a close up of the cloth, cloth inserts, but leather or leatherette on the exterior with some orange stitching as well. Looks good. Let's see here, more pictures. Okay, so cargo, it looks like we have adjustable floor height. Um, and the reason is, <clears throat> when you fold down these seats, this is, gosh, the um, the new Sequoia is doing something exactly the same. So they have this 
riser floor. So when you fold down the seats in the second row, um, it's a flat floor. Uh, so these the second row seats will not fold into the floor, which makes sense because there's a battery pack sitting there. Um, and these outlets remind me of some of the power uh, settings that's going on. I don't believe it's going to offer vehicle to vehicle charging, but it will offer um, kind of like a mobile mobile office or mobile apartment. I could imagine people buying these things and living in them like they have in the past. But yes, it's not going to I don't think it's going to be like vehicle to load other than just powering um accessories tools laptops things like that uh buenos buenos tardes otra vez <laughs> yep it says sykes a pop from from uh puerto rico gotta put my watch on here just charged it so i'm ready to ricardo yes how are you thanks for coming out Guys, thanks for, thanks everyone for coming out. the The stream goes, the official announcement goes live pretty soon here. If you're just coming in, if I go back to this page here, uh, we're we're live in about eight minutes for the production version of the ID Buzz. Some people are saying that they might change the name of it. There's no way they've been advertising this thing for five years as ID Buzz, and it it is a play on the word for the Volkswagen Bus. So people will probably just call it the Buzz. Or the bus? I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's clever. It's clever. Uh, Gary, how you doing? Thanks for coming out. Better be 500, mile, 500 kilometers range, maybe. Definitely not miles. Uh, Kirk, why are base models of new EVs rear-wheel drive while most base models of other cars front-wheel drive? Any idea? Well, rear-wheel drive, it's its much cheaper and easier to make a rear-wheel drive electric car. Um, and you can have a better balanced car that way as well. Um, so you could have your, your inverter, battery, your air conditioning all up front, and then you can have the electric motor. Uh, I mean, 12-volt battery, if I said battery. Yeah, you can have your 12-volt battery up front as well as the inverter and other things. And then you have an electric motor in the rear. And so it'll have a better balance. You also, since it's not a um, like like a gas car, in order to have rear wheel drive, you have to have a drive shaft, unless it's rear engine. But in the common common front engine rear wheel drive, you have to have a drive shaft, which adds weight. It also takes away from internal cargo internal cargo space as well because you have that tunnel. Um, so rear wheel drive also <laughs> there's a ton of reasons. Rear wheel drive is also a better feeling sensation. If I remember correctly, weren't the original buses rear-wheel drive too? Of course, they had a drive shaft. Um, yeah, I don't know a ton about the old buses, to be honest. I'm not a Volkswagen like aficionado. You guys know that because I cover mainly Japanese and Korean cars. But I think, yeah, the reasons I spelled out are, uh, explain why most, not most, but a lot of companies are going rear-wheel drive biased you could see it in the koreans with their egmp platform you see with volkswagen tesla of course uh, and the list goes on toyota's first mass product produced ev the bz4x is taking the front wheel drive method so there's no right or wrong way uh, there's just different ways to skin a cat in this situation uh, sykes a pop i don't see it as a three row for us as this sounds like a caddy with a bev Longer wheelbase. So yeah, there are going to be two wheelbases. U.S. is only getting the long wheelbase. Um, and if it doesn't come in three row, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This is a minivan. If it doesn't come in three row, they're they're idiots. <laughs> so I hope you're wrong. Your your comments are always really well thought out and intelligent. But I hope you're wrong in this case because if it doesn't have three rows, or at least available three rows, like I can understand if it's two row standard like base model and then but it's a minivan like if you don't that's why there's gonna be a cargo variant there's gonna be a cargo variant that doesn't have the second or third row but that's not coming to america that's only for europe my understanding <clears throat> elmo i love the id buzz and i believe minivans like the lexus lm are true luxury minivans yeah unfortunately we don't get the lm here in the united states lm 300h or the lm 350 i think I think it has a V6, but most of them are the hybrids. <clears throat> Kirk, say it is a starting battery for the lead acid one. Yeah, the 12 volt. 
12 volt battery. Yep. That'll be in the front more than likely. It hasn't, it hasn't been communicated, but like 99.9% sure. Uh, also I ha I didn't, I didn't show you guys this one. I don't think I showed you guys this, this picture. So we have a little digital screen behind the steering wheel, which looks like it's going to sit off of the, the dash, which is pretty cool. So a little 3d floating display here kind of reminds me a little bit of the BZ4X, but that screen is a little bit closer to the windshield. Um, pretty neat. This might be a thing. They might be keeping the, the pause in the plate <laughs> pedals that we saw, uh, from the ID buzz concept. Uh, so that looks like it could be coming to production. Here's your memory seats, same position it was in the GLI that I test drove. Um, Tablet-like screen in the middle, no surprise. Some foreign bottled water that we don't get in America. But it, yeah, a couple speakers. I mean, there's there's not a whole lot to see since a lot of it's covered, but steering wheel looks great. I like, and my only issue with light colored steering wheels is how are they gonna hold up over time with dirt, grease, you know, our hands get sweaty and gross. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we also have the haptic feedback buttons, which I wasn't a big fan of in the GLI that I just drove. So no car is perfect, right? Here's your drive select. Um, we'll find out so many more details, guys, in just two to three minutes. Um, your drive selects right there behind the stream on the right hand side. So, and then pro probably a removable slash movable console here. That's kind of par for course on minivans, but Toyota kind of but butchered that on the recent Sienna, having this big deck here that you can't remove. Which don't I don't need to don't need to go into the the harping train today. All right. <clears throat> if you guys came out for the Q uh, CX60 reveal yesterday, it was definitely unexpected because Mazda like pulled their punch last second because of. Uh, they didn't they didn't want to be insensitive to what's going on in Ukraine. So I don't think we're going to see the same sort sort of oh, here's the reveal slash not the reveal because of what's going on in Europe. I don't think we'll see that from from Volkswagen. Taker 610, two dollars. Thank you. I appreciate it. When do you expect press event for the Nissan Aria? You know, I haven't heard much. So Nissan will have the Z event. I'll be going, fingers crossed, as everything's wor worked out in the first week of May. Um, but I haven't heard anything in Aria. So Aria should be available by the end of the year. So more than likely, press event would be fall, October, October, November. Just my guess. Uh, I want. I really want to drive the Aria. They just Nissan just came out with a a video teasing. Or, or kind of playing with their E-Force technology. It's a little RC car using E-Force technology. It's essentially what electric battery electric cars anyways are just upscaled RC cars. Uh, but they, they're giving people ramen at a ramen bar on the back of a little uh, uh, E-Force, which is the name for their proprietary electric all-wheel drive system. Anyways, it's, it's a funny little commercial if you guys haven't checked it out. <clears throat> CX-60 is a miss. Well, the interior definitely isn't. Um, <laughs> the powertrain definitely isn't. Driving mechan mechanics more than likely isn't. But the exterior design is, is a bit of a miss. The st you're guessing the steering wheel comes from the GLI? I No, it doesn't because the GLI had different texturing and different design on the steering wheel. But the buttons... or should you might be right, but the finishing is different. Um, see if I can go back to this image. Yeah, see how it's kind of smooth all the way around on the outside? That wasn't the case on the GLI. The GLI had this little hook here, right at the bottom of like the, the six and three position um, to help with turning the steering wheel. There, there are instances where I felt like it was actually handy I've never seen that on a steering wheel before, but it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different, but it's probably the same bones just wrapped in a different material and has definitely the same haptic buttons. Shame the RT on will be discontinued. Yeah. It, it kind of 
I always felt like it would share the same fate of the Volkswagen CC. Mark says, don't jinx it, Kirk. Yeah, I mean, it's we're already at, at the top of the hour. Hey, let me do we have any music? I don't think we have any music coming from here. Um, but volumes up just in case they start playing something. <laughs> the, the irony of Lego Rick Deckard. He said, "Ridiculous! It's a car reveal, not a carnival." I'm assuming you're assuming assuming you're referring to the colors here, but at the same time, Kia's minivan is called the carnival. So, <laughs> the irony. Okay. Um, any news about the the Honda Civic Type R? No, I haven't heard anything. Um, I just filmed my review. Uh, it's more of like a Q&A review of the Honda Civic Si since I just drove it uh, in the mountains outside Malibu in the fall. So I, I got it's it's leaving tomorrow. So I just filmed my review today. But but things have changed since then. So they're doing this is the exact same. Okay, what? That's a great concern. Is that witness? Okay, so they're doing the exact same thing um, as Mazda did yesterday. Regarding the tonight, we've discussed it to decide to hold the world premiere of the new ID Buzz, a vehicle that our team has been working on for years. So the wait continues. Um, but they are going to show us a video like Mazda did yesterday of the CX-60. So this will give us enough to talk about. Maybe we can get uh, an official press release as well. So we'll check back at the Volkswagen page in a little bit. Welcome to the ID.Bus world premiere. This evening should have been about the rise of an icon. As we mentioned before, we decided to go ahead with this world premiere with a clear focus on the product. We're here in Hamburg, a city of contrasts, full of tradition and futuristic modernity. A perfect place for the launch of a new icon, the ID.Bus. Actually, this isn't really the start of the ID bus story, though. The new all-electric microbus has been on a camouflage test drive throughout Europe for four weeks. Barcelona, Paris, London, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, and now it's finally here in Hamburg for the reveal. This world premiere is about heritage and future, and so is this place, Schuppen 52, a traditional place close to the urban harbor city of Hamburg. In the 1950s, Thousands of Volkswagen buses were shipped all over the world from these dockside sheds. Today, the area has the largest solar energy system in Hamburg and is powered by 100% green electricity. So it's really a perfect place for the ID.Bus world premiere, where tradition meets innovation and our new star meets a world star. So are you ready for this? All right, let's go. At least we're going to see it in the flesh. If they're not going to do a full reveal, at least we get to see it. All right, oh. welcome <laughs> Maybe to not. the world premiere oh, of the ID bus. <laughs> Truly an icon of the Volkswagen brand and what an honor you and McGregor has joined us. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for that. I mean, everybody got knows some Obi-Wan up in the house right now. Films. He's a famous movie actor. But actually today he's here because he's also a car enthusiast. It's also a Which motorcycle enthusiast. Which makes us proud because it's not just any car. It actually is very much associated with our brand. Is that of right? Course. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been a, a Volkswagen enthusiast pretty much all my life, I think it's true to say. Um, your early drive times. <laughs> now look at that, you and, uh, I mean, what car is that? I mean, of course it's a Beetle, but yes. what's the story? Well, it was my, it was the third in a line of my mom and dad. They had a red Beetle, then we had a white Beetle. This was my first day at school, why I look a bit freaked out. I remember it very clearly. My mom and dad would put me and my brother in the back seat of it, and we would drive to uh, Brittany in France. Every summer camping was our summer holiday. Well, we actually, sh many of us share those stories uh, that actually people with Volkswagen, uh, they got around. So it was the car that gave us freedom. Yeah, this was uh, the car that gave me freedom when I was 16. I've got four Beetles now. 
I just, it's a love I've never got over. I love it. You paid us a visit and you came over also to visit our plan in Hanover and in Wolfsburg. Yes. How was that? It was an amazing opportunity for me to see the ID buzz actually being made, you know, going through the production line here. Thanks for pointing that out. Of course, the ID buzz, I think it's the car that takes VW into the future, but with all our hearts. Yes. Um, and I can feel that when you talk about it, and it takes everything that we love into the future as well, like, of course, the T1. You love, of course, your classic cars, but you also convert them into battery electric drivetrains. Yeah, the 54, the oval, is, is fully electric now. There's there's batteries in the front where the petrol tank used to be and in the in the in the parcel shelf behind the rear seat. And then my T1 in the background, my single cab. I use it around my place a lot to move things. I moved house with it. I yeah. I moved all my furniture in it. Yeah. I just use it all the time. I love it. Yeah, those cars not only are uh, emotional, they're also practical. Isn't yeah. that amazing? I mean, I, yeah. I use my 23 window with nine seats to pick up people from the airport. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> the feedback you get from people around you is, is fantastic. Yeah. So everybody loves it. How uh, lovely, it yeah. The association with the car is love yeah. and happiness. Yeah. And now the big moment, of course. I'm really excited. I hope you're really excited. Uh, we're building momentum for our brand, for us as a VW family. Let's see what the cars look like what they can do, and let's learn about all details of those new family members. Okay, adaptive headlights, that's confirmed at this point. Finally, here we, here are, we go. With our new all electric icon, the ID Bus. Definitely the most emotional of our e models. Like no other car, the ID Bus unites the past with the future, full of emotions, history, and the latest technology. Over five years ago, we embarked on a bold mission the transformation to e mobility. And we committed to becoming a carbon neutral company by 2050. Our way to zero is the largest change in the history of our company. And we are making steady progress. In 2021, we doubled our e-delivery worldwide. And the race is going on. I'm particularly happy that today we can unveil the next milestone on this exciting journey. With its proud legacy, the ID Bus is an outstanding symbol of Volkswagen's transformation. Furthermore, it shows the great team spirit between Volkswagen passenger cars and Volkswagen commercial vehicles. Indeed, the ID Bus is the first zero emission vehicle in large scale production, launched simultaneously in a bus and a cargo version. As the first in its segment, the ID Bus was designed and developed as an all electric vehicle. Since we presented the show car, the anticipation around the world has been rising. And this for a good reason. In the 60s, the Volkswagen Microbus stood for a new feeling of independency and great love. We still long for that today. ID.Bus takes up this attitude of life and transfers it into our time. Emission-free, fully connected and full of great emotions. Carbon neutral, flexible, spacious, and cozy. A smart travel companion for everyone that offers maximum driving pleasure. I like the orange. Which when this stream is over, or should I say this video is over, I'm gonna show you a, a Kia Rondo that I saw yesterday that had a similar color palette 
and two-tone as this orange vehicle does. Hey, ID. Please take me to the future lab. Have a good journey. To increase safety, the idea light can visually warn us. For example, when pedestrians are crossing. Jeez. Well done, ID. That scared me. <laughs> and in an emergency, front assist can also initiate braking. The ID bus has been developed as a pure electric vehicle, the only one in its class, and it's packed with technology. Well, Cybertruck's not coming out this year. The ID it's been delayed for like two years now. The modular platform this is coming out this year for in all Europe. our latest generation EVs. This concept enables us to bring sustainability to the market quickly and effectively. It also saves an incredible amount of space. The axles are set far apart to ensure short overhangs. The ID bus is currently our largest model based on the same principle as the rest of the ID product line. Our vehicles are not only connected with each other, they also communicate with the traffic infrastructure. They receive and send important traffic hazard information using a dedicated communication standard that is independent of the cellular network. This can help to avoid accidents. And the vehicles are constantly updated over the air. This ensures that the ID family is always running on the latest software version. The ID bus features even more innovative connected technologies like actively assisted lane changing and the new train parking. Both of these systems offer our customers additional comfort in a vehicle of this size. For instance, the latest version of Travel Assist uses swarm data to enhance road safety with driving information gathered from other vehicles that have been using this road before. This can help keep the vehicle in the lane on roads with no lane markings. The ID bus is okay, already capable of transferring energy from its battery into a home energy storage system. Oh, okay, it's I didn't know about vehicle that. To home. That's and good in the to future, hear. I didn't it think can I was feed coming. energy into the public power grid if necessary. Talking about the future. Autonomous driving sounds like pie in the sky, but it's already much closer than you think. The shared riding model with autonomous ID bus vehicles is starting here in Hamburg in 2025. We are already on the road with the latest technology and vehicle software in cooperation with Moya, a local ride sharing service. The upcoming ID bus ID is the first Volkswagen Group model to be equipped with a level four self-driving system for autonomous driving. It's our pioneering force into a new era of mobility. Hey guys, are you preparing the scene for Lars? Yes. Sir. Great, wait a minute. Send Lars some greetings from me. Thanks. I really hope they show the interior. Sustainability really in the cargo yet. business, a key to our success in the future. The ID Bus Cargo is a perfectly sustainable partner. Like our new Volkswagen in-house startup, Cito, this B2B transport solution focuses on time-critical transportation. Wherever their carriers go in the future with the ID bus cargo, they go with zero local emissions. Just like the original Volkswagen microbus, the ID bus has rear-wheel drive. And the ID bus is right at home in tight inner city spaces. It's amazingly agile. The wheelbase is virtually the same as the VW T6.1, but the vehicle length is about 20 cm shorter. In other words, the ID bus offers roughly the same interior space, but fits into a smaller parking spot. And the turning circle is mere 11 meters, which is about the same as the VW Golf. The ID bus cargo means maximum flexibility. The front area is available with a double bench seat or a single seat on the passenger side. 
a tailgate or two wing doors and a single or double sliding doors on the side offer optimal loading access. The front area is of course separated from the cargo space with a partition with or without windows. Four cubic meters cargo area offer enough space for two euro pallets. And more than 600 kilos plus a roof load capacity of 100 kilograms. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ram on top. Okay. Numerous okay. loading features are available. Fastening rails for a newer channel under the front passenger seat. Together with that long list, the ID bus can be customized with conversion solutions and extensions for any business. Whether you are a service provider, a craftsman, a special transport operator, you run a digital startup or a large delivery fleet. With plug and charge, all you have to do is plug in the cable. No more annoying extra steps like connecting through an app or searching for the right charging card, which saves you time for more important things. Great, huh? You know, we are not talking now about only car, we are talking about a uh, moving icon. It's a very special moment. So, Astrid. Astrid is the expert in color and trim. What do you think about the color? About this, how is it feeling? I'm happy, Josef. We have an optimistic, positive and bright colored palette. Also the B color variant yeah, you can order. Yeah. It makes everything so much more lifestyle. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about lifestyle, I have to show you something, Clink. You have to see it. What are you doing? No worry about that. We're driving. Stop the movie, please. No, come on, come on. Look how iconic it is. You know, it's simple, it's clear, and it has such a strong character. Timeless. You are right. <laughs> it's like T1, but it's still very modern, very futuristic, you know? It's yeah. a really friendly car. It's Volkswagen. We have some nice features in the interior as well. So um, what about going back inside and let me drive this time? Oh, you? Yeah, you can have a seat oh. in the back. Okay, okay. Then we can start the movie now. She's driving. It's nice details, nice quality. But what is great as well is the space. You feel so much space. Everything is simplified. It's so functional, but so clean. Yeah, and I also like the touch of the materials. We have so many things in here that are sustainable. This steering wheel here is made from non-animal materials, for example. The ceiling is also made from recycled PET bottles. Did you touch the seat? Oh, they the are. The lure made. is made from PET bottles. Did you know that? I did, I did. But it's great, and the charming details. Do you see some already? No, I them? haven't seen them yet. No, you have to look at it. The, the point is that you don't get them to see in the beginning, but I give you a little help. There's, for example, one smile Doug very DeMuro close to you. Okay. Actually, just posted them. a video, mm -hmm. and he and does a walk one, around on the ID buzz. Okay. When you go Good for him. and look the car from the back. The ambient light, you know, and you look a little bit around. Maybe we can do it even now. With a bit of magic. Guys, can you please Turn the light down, <laughs> that we can have a look. The ambient lighting goes into the back, Great we just light saw. light and very cozy. Feels like home, huh? Very modern. Like a modern home for everybody. Huh? It's cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful car. We love it that you love Volkswagen, you love yeah. classic cars, and you love battery electric vehicles, so that's probably the perfect combination to bring you on stage. Yeah, I really believe in electric vehicles. I believe in Volkswagen's passion for uh, sustainability and their goals for the future, I think, are really admirable and exciting. So I'm, I'm proud to be part of their story in a little way, you know? Same here. We're driven. 
uh, by our way to zero. We're driven by sustainability. You do exactly the same. We need everybody to support that journey. And I'm looking forward to seeing many of these ID buses on the streets globally, adding a smile to many faces just like with us today. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This evening is a milestone on our way towards the future with our new ID bus. This truly is a car that our customers, car enthusiasts and microbus fans have been waiting for. A car that only Volkswagen could make, loaded with heritage, with emotion and with technology for a new era of mobility. Everybody at Volkswagen is so proud to bring the ID bus to the road. Many thanks to the whole team that made this car possible. And of course, thank you for joining the world premiere of the ID bus tonight. The legend is back. I hope you enjoyed the show. Okay. Um, I'll let it keep running, but I'm gonna head to their, their newsroom. Take care um, and see you soon. There we go, get some more B-roll of it. They didn't do circular lights because it needs to follow in the design theme of their ID family. That's my guess why they didn't stick with the heritage lights. They also have these like triple bars on the D pillar back here. I don't remember seeing that in the concept. Oh, the little piece. They did the piece logo at the end. That's pretty cool. All right, so that should be done. And we're going to head over to the Volkswagen page. It doesn't look like they have anything up on their on their press page. That's quite surprising. Maybe it's because they're not doing a full reveal. Like they like they said at the beginning, that little disclaimer at the beginning. That's a bit strange. So uh, Volkswagen have tried oh, for here we go. Years, for decades, for 21 years. Oh, okay. It just it automatically streamed this guy. <laughs> so I'm like, what's happening? Okay, so <clears throat> ID Buzz. It is official. Uh, other the, the design's official. We don't have official details on pa pricing, packaging, availability, power, other than it, it'll have the same power as this guy over here. Uh, the Vi the ID4 Pro 4S when it has all-wheel drive, which probably won't come until 2024 or later. ID4 rear-wheel drive uh, powertrain will be the base powertrain that we'll see here beginning of 2023. 201 horsepower, zero to sixty under 10 seconds. Uh, it's 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 a microbus. It's not supposed to be a performance vehicle. It's supposed to be an ultimately functional vehicle, and I'm excited for it. Hopefully, we get numbers on range, but more than likely, it's around 250 miles of range starting off. Um, oh, so where's that Kia Rondo I was talking about? Yeah, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> All right. Check out this Kia Rondo, guys. This vehicle, <laughs> I could not believe. Did this come from the factory? Like this, I have no idea, but I couldn't help but take a picture of this <laughs> yesterday. Uh, very ID buzzy, right? Very ID buzzy <laughs> with the two-tone paint. Um, so I'll go back to, I guess, playing this and I'll put it below my face, I guess. Since we don't have any other official B-roll or anything. Um, see there's my face i don't see any other official b-roll or interior shots i mean they showed that guy in the back there was no panel roof on that specific model so i i believe that there's going to be a panel roof um let's see here live stream that's it we don't have we don't have official press release from volkswagen um 
That's quite surprising. Uh, Mark, I don't know, Kirk, there's a lot of space for more battery power. So Mad Hatter will figure out how to smoke a Model S. <laughs> Uh, it's on the website. So do I go to the, the Volkswagen website? I can't spell right now. My microphone's like right in front of my keyboard. Uh, Volkswagen.com. <clears throat> Here we go. This happened with Mazda yesterday. As I'm so used to checking out the press release pages, because that's where breaking news should be coming from, from their newsrooms. But it looks like their actual websites are a little bit quicker to the punch here. All right, so let me take this off. Um, where's the video? There you go. There you go. All right, so here we are at their main website. Um, and let's check this out. Let's get buzzing. Um, European model shown, not available for sale in US. Okay, so this exact model, I mean, they just have to do that for um, advertising reasons. Um, curious, there's a lot going on that buzz. And less, and the less we know, the more curious we get. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so let's. I mean, we know what the exterior looks like based off of the videos we just watched. So let's get a better idea of this interior, which the minivan is all about the interior. All right. I love the two tone orange. You even have an orange theme on the touchscreen here. This looks like a twelve inch, twelve to fourteen inch touchscreen. You have your temperature, your time. Um, your heated and ventilated seats are all going to be touch sensitive uh, on the screen. Here is your drive meter to let you know uh, what drive position you're in or driving function you're in. Park, reverse, neutral. Uh, battery will be pretty much like a battery setting for downhill, I, my guess. Not quite sure on that because uh, I haven't driven the ID, ID4 or anything. Um, all of your okay, so this is good. We have defrost buttons over here on the left So you don't have to fumble through the menus to get the defrost working. Here's the touch sensitive uh, buttons on the steering wheel like I was expecting um, It looks like this could be driving modes over here. It's kind of hard to tell um, Maybe we'll get some close-ups, but we're just gonna thumb through these pictures There we go. Oh cool yellow interior Man, my wife likes orange and yellow. So, I mean, to be honest, guys, like I really would want a battery electric minivan, but taking a trip to Disney from where I live is like three to four hours away. And there's no charging that I'm aware of at Disney, probably at the hotels. But if you're just going to like the parking lots. So I'm, ju I'm just trying to think in my case scenario, could I make this vehicle work? And the answer is I probably could. But I lust over this vehicle more than any other minivan on the market. And I have been for five years now. Uh, we have a really... Uh, okay, so the vents, this is like a, a common theme now. I'm just getting the Civic Si where a big partition of the dash is a continuous design line. And the vents are hidden inside of it. And that's what Volkswagen's doing here. Um, I like the wood trim below those vents. Uh, looks like this is more of a a brushed aluminum it doesn't look like polished like super shiny like we saw in the qx60 yesterday so i'm okay with that um it looks more like a stainless steel sort of color assuming it's not that shiny a little pouch here for you to put your things here's your cup holders down below more cup holders here with the i'm assuming removable uh, console in the middle armrest a fold down okay so here, better we have a close-up here of these buttons um Again, it's still hard to see. I can tell these are, are defrost, though. All right, let's keep moving. Let me see what you guys have to say. Kirk, driving mode is on the infotainment system. The left side is the light function. Okay, thank you for sharing that. So here's the two rows of seats. We actually got a, sim a similar picture to this last week from Volkswagen. Uh, it just looks very clean, very open. I love that there's nothing blocking you in the middle. Are you listening, Toyota? There's no bridge here making you claustrophobic. The back seat. So, yeah, this is the second row of seats. You see the sliding doors. Um, some storage cubby inside of here. I feel like things would just slide around inside of this, though. Um, I don't see a door handle or, or a, a lever or anything. Um, so my guess is that this could be the window switches and then this would be just the open door button. 
Okay, a better idea of the seats here. You can see how high they came. They come off the base of the floor. Um, they don't fold into the floor. There's a battery pack <laughs> underneath the floor, or is the floor almost? So uh, they should be removable, though. Have I gone through all the pictures? That's it. No. Do we not get any pictures of the third row? Are they not going to show that? That's unfortunate. What do you guys think about this grill? I mean, this looks like a pattern taken out of a, a French fry basket that puts into the fryer. <laughs> that sort of lattice. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if I'm a big fan of this this design at the bottom. But the rest of it, it I'm okay with. Love that they kept the large Volkswagen logo. Would have been nice to have the circular lights, yeah, but they got to make it the design similar to the rest of the ID vehicles. Get some large uh, wheels on this particular model. I I prefer fat uh, fat fat tires and skinny. Gosh, I can't talk. Fat tires and small wheels on my on most of my vehicles, especially if they're people carrying vehicles. Um, cause I I don't need it. I don't need the huge wheels to make it handle better. I'd rather have the softer ride. That's that that's when you know I'm getting old. It's when I prefer the prefer the softer ride and, and large tires and small wheels. I love the orange color. The taillights are um I love how they flow with the the two tone. I think it looks pretty good. As good as a boxy van can. Other than this lattice. I feel like ugh, just it's like over overdone here. It's probably a throwback to some of their older designs. Um but overall, it does look really good. Okay, poll time. So I got to see how many of you are still in. We still have 450 of you guys. So I'm going to create a poll. And I'm going to ask, um, what minivan would you are you most interested in? And I'm talking about North America. So hold on. Which van do you want the most? ID Buzz. To Odyssey, I probably spelled Odyssey wrong. Uh, <laughs> Carnival, Vienna. Oh no! Did I run out? Did I run out of space? I can't put Pacifica on here, so we'll just put Carnival slash Pacifica. Since they're, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not even gonna put Pacifica on here. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, the the poll should be up. So let me know which van after, I mean, again, we don't know official specs, but the poll is up for which van do you want the most, ID Buzz, Odyssey, Carnival, or Sienna. Um, those are the main vans I've talked about on the channel. I don't ever have plans to cover uh, Stellantis, therefore Chrysler, Pacifica on the channel. So ID Buzz already taking the early lead here. It's impressive. Yeah, no, my girls have been here the whole time. <laughs> They're um, they make themselves known very, quite often. Uh, Thanos Craft says, "Screw Chrysler, <laughs> brutal." Taker six ten. The the Carnival SX Prestige is probably about the same money as the ID Buzz, probably. <laughs> Toyota Toyota man says he works at Toyota, so he's biased. I get it. Pacifica will never be a van in my mind. Yeah, I'll always think of the crossover that they had in the mid 2000s or so, early 2000s, mid early 2000s. Don't forget Transit Connect um, might be new next year. Well, the Transit, the Transit is only a commercial vehicle, right? Are you saying that they're making a a uh, a passenger version? We don't have price, we guys. We don't. We have so little. So I don't know what else Volkswagen would have shown if they didn't feel like they had to recognize the Ukrainian struggles right now. Um, I don't know if they would have unveiled a reveal date, uh, specifics on powertrains, batteries, range. I don't, I don't know what they would have done differently. They showed a lot more than I was expecting to after that original disclaimer. Um, so I'm happy. I'm just happy we got what we got, to be honest. Because it could have it could have uh, happened like the CX60 yesterday, where 
we had to scramble to like the UK website and then the Germany website to, to get the details. And they really didn't share much at all in, in that small video that they had of the exterior design of the CX-60. <clears throat> ID, you, Jim wants the ID buzz, but not practical for cold regions. Uh, not four wheel drive. Well, it's not four wheel drive yet, and no battery leap. And there is no battery leap. I can't even talk. At least here in North America, a battery electric vehicle exclusive to cold climates is a tough sell because your range drops, and then you also have the issue um, of the lack of infrastructure here. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough sell in cold climates, battery electric cars, uh, if you absolutely need your your range to be accurate <laughs> make the interior better than they do the new beetle well it the images are fooling me the images for the interior looks fun and minimalistic pretty high quality materials overall from what i see of course i can't really tell um without actually being in the vehicle with like with how things feel but man i wish we got third row we don't have any details about packaging variations tiers i don't even know what the sound equipment's going to be like like we just know interior exterior design oh i just noticed the little dinner tray on the back of the front seat so i hopefully that's that's removable <laughs> Um, one of the big surprises for me was vehicle to home and vehicle to grid. I was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be kind of like what the F-150 um, the F-150 hybrid does, where you have a bunch of outlet power, accessory power. That's kind of where, where I was expecting. But ha haptic controls are crap on the steering wheel. I agree. It's not terrible. But why make things overly complicated when they don't need to be buttons on steering wheels work really really well switches on steering wheels roller dials on steering wheels work well um if, if you're talking about the genesis vehicles or even the honda civic si that i still have like there's a roll roller dial and those can work really well for flipping through the menus flipping through or, or adjusting your volume toggle switches work well on steering wheels haptic is unnecessarily like complicated in my opinion why fix what isn't broken because all of these could easily be buttons i don't need the steering wheel when i apply pressure to apply vibration to let me know that i pressed it yeah i don't want to go too much on a rant i was very ranty yesterday um <laughs> in the cx cx60 video uh guyrol <laughs> Kirk, they haven't shown the long wheelbase U.S. version yet. That will have the third row. Ah, that explains when they say European model shown that this is a short wheelbase ver version. Oh, so I'm going to have to check out um, Safi and Bay uh, from Redline Reviews. He just had he just did a walk around. So did Doug Demuro. They did walk arounds on the Volkswagen ID Buzz. I haven't. Obviously, I haven't watched it. It looks to be the exact same model that we're looking at, so the European spec. Um, but I will check his video out after this because I'll probably learn some things that we didn't learn from the, um, I don't know, press but not press release today, the press video that we got today. There will be a camper conversion rumored for 2025 from my understanding. Uh, did I miss where they showed some available colors? What did I see? All we've seen for available colors, if I remember correctly, is this yellow and the orange. So if I go back to exterior gallery, <clears throat> yellow and the orange are the only things I've seen so far, which I would take mine in orange. Okay, so next, okay, so 75% of you in, in the poll, 118 votes have said, you would take the ID Buzz over all the other minivans. That's a landslide victory because the other minivans are good in, in the, on, that I put up there. Odyssey Carnival, Sienna, Sienna being the biggest attractor votes at 17% behind the 74% of the ID Buzz. Holy cow. That, that's really surprising. I didn't expect you guys 
to pick the ID buzz, but I'm going to do an, another, well, I should say ID buzz in that landslide victory. I'm going to do another question here. ID buzz in which color? We have uh, yellow, white, we have orange, white, and then I'm going to put anything else. So I'll see what you guys have to say on this poll. Talk about your favorite colors. They had a blue in the ploy video also shown, but those are, all, well, the blue one from what I saw was um, the cargo one meant for businesses. It wasn't the passenger one, but more than likely that blue will be on the passenger. Jennifer uh, Garachi, I thought this had been hyped up for the last several years as a camper. It will be a camper. There will be a camper variant, but since we don't have full details, it it looks like the only thing we have to go by is the rumor or maybe a loose window of 2025 for the camper version. Elmo wants the carnival. It's a good van. I've been trying to drive it for like a year now, and I still haven't got it for a press vehicle. Um, next press vehicle is, I should have one coming in, tomorrow um i'm swapping out the civic si for a corolla xse but i guess just got in last night the centra sr remember this the Centra? what wasn't it the centra ser's from back in the day that was like a, a civic si fighter but yeah it's it's not nearly it's not going to be nearly that fun to drive like like those old five speed six speed manuals cvt yo but it's really well equipped, and I haven't driven a Sentra, and I can't tell you how long. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to review it for you guys. U.S. 2023 model goes on sale and available in 2024. Maddie, I, I'm, I, I know the, 20, the, the ID Buzz will be available in 2023 for America. On the table when McGregor was talking, there were some color palettes. Ah, good eye, good eye. This van has a nostalgic value that other vans don't have. I still regret selling your 91 Westphalia. Or sorry, 81. Kevin, next question. Tidy Whitey or Boxer? Not happening. <laughs> uh, you guys, half of you would pick any other color other than orange and yellow. Yellow has a slight lead over orange. I would take the orange. I would take the orange. Kidding me? Guys, look at that. But I also just drove the Civic, so I keep talking about the Civic SI because it's still out there. And that's in the blazing orange color, and I love that color. So, Kirk, you should try to get the ID4 press car. Yes, I probably should. <laughs> um, I probably should at this point since, okay, here's, an, here, okay, I have 200, there's not that many of you left, but here's, here's an important poll for the channel because... I do mainly cover Japanese and Korean cars, but I don't have to stay there. And I'm excited to talk about other cars. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to ask you guys, do you want me to cover Volkswagen on the channel regular, <laughs> regularly? <laughs> yes, no. That is that is the question. And guys, this is a tiny subsample. You guys are just, you know, there's only a 300 view, which the most valuable 300 I have in my subscriber base. And if you're not subscribed, I would appreciate that. Get to 150,000 together. Um, but I typically cover Japanese and Korean cars. And there are times where I feel like I don't have enough to cover because I cover a lot of news. But in terms of like press releases, uh, media events, I feel overwhelmed just covering the Japanese and the Koreans because they're just so, like, they're, that's a lot of cars. There's a lot of Japanese and Korean cars that come out every year. So if I start including more brands, it's got to be a slow addition to the channel. It's got to be very, very slow so I don't bite off more than I can chew too fast too soon. Volkswagen, it's a pretty streamlined brand. Then the next question would be like, well, Volkswagen Auto Auto Group, you gotta cover Porsche, you gotta cover Audi, you gotta cover this. I don't, I, I don't want to go. 
it's a slippery slope, right? Um, Volkswagen, though, has had my attention, I don't know, ever since I was a kid, probably. I've always enjoyed Volkswagens. Um, I'm not saying they're the, they're the best made cars. I'm not saying they're the fastest cars, or, or but I I still like them, okay? Um, and the ID Buzz, it's been a five-year wait, and based off the design, it has been worth it. So I can't wait to see the long wheelbase. Um, 75% of you say yes. And I remember it was a similar attitude for the audience when I asked, should I cover Korean cars? That was maybe two years ago now. I started adding Korean cars into the rotational mix. Um, and most of you guys wanted that. I had a, I had backlash from a few people who are extremist. They only wanted me to cover Japanese cars or they only wanted me to cover Toyota and nothing else. Like that, would, that some people can do that. And that makes them happy to me. It doesn't make me happy. I want to cover the things that I enjoy covering and Volkswagen right now is interesting to me. I find them quite entertaining. I like their designs. I like where they're going. Um, and this bus is pretty badass. So, and you guys know, I like minivans that, that definitely helps the bus's case, but no Tesla. No, I have no plans to cover Tesla. Um, I just, no, that if I were to do Tesla, it would be like a totally different channel. It would have to, I would have to start fresh from the bottom up because you have to cater to Tesla fans. And I can make, I can turn off that switch and turn it back on if I had different channels covering Tesla. But in terms of covering Tesla on this channel, I'm not going to do it. All right. 75% of you. So 67 of you have voted. There's about 300 of you in the stream. 67 have said they would like to see more Volkswagen on the channel. Sorry, 68 votes. 75% of those votes have said they would like to see more Volkswagen on the channel. Seats do not fold into the floor. Um, seats, let's go back. It's one of the first images. Bear with me, we'll get there. Oh, I need to go to interior, that's why. Here we go. Seats do not fold flat on the floor. So they have a riser system that puts this little fabric covering up higher. So when the seats do fold down at, at, at this plastic level, excuse me, it'll it'll flow with the riser floor in the cargo area. All right. Sykes and Pop, just on the entertainment value of Volkswagens, repent for their dieselgate sins is worth the coverage. Yeah. No, I it, they're, they're making a turnaround. And they had to go radical after dieselgate. I get it. And it is fun to cover. And they're, you know, if I cover Toyota, Toyota's the largest manufacturer in the world. And Volkswagen's like right there with them, essentially. <clears throat> they trade blows every few year, excuse me, few years for the biggest volume automaker. So that would uh allow me to to bring more people into the channel, uh, bring more more excitement into the channel, and hopefully, fingers crossed, allow the channel to grow a little bit more. Channel, since you guys are here in the live stream. You're the, probably the most, some of the more loyal followers of the channel. Channel's kind of slow right now. And I think a part of it um, is we're just coming out of winter. So there's not that much happening in the automotive world. There's not a lot of breaking news or anything. Um, not a lot of new models being released. There is also um, a huge drop in advertising for automotive vehicles. So um, how that affects a YouTuber is, well, one, monetarily, but... I'm not getting pushed as much because there's not as much car advertising since ever cars don't need to be advertised right now. They're selling out with, with zero advertising and the manufacturers are laughing all the way, all the way to the bank. Oh, I don't have to pay for ever. They're, they're reaping the benefits that Tesla sees in that regard because the demand is just so high. They can't produce enough cars because of the microchip shortage. So they don't need to advertise. Um, and that affects the YouTube ecosystem, especially the YouTubers on, you know, how we get paid. And that's okay. Don't worry, guys. I'll be fine. But I think that's why the channel's been slow. Um, like, I had a, a record month in January in terms of views. It was amazing. And then it's just kind of nosedived after that. And I don't, I'm not doing anything different, I don't think. So it's it's fun. And it, it, it it's exciting. I'm excited for the for things to pick back up again. 
uh, late spring, early summer, the channel will start taking off again due to the car market taking off again. So it's a lot of fun. Tesla will get me more subs. It'll also get it'll also get a, pe- a lot of people mad at me. Just cover all manufacturers. I, I wish I could. I can't. I'm a one man show. If I were to cover more manufacturers, I would need to restructure how I do everything. I would need to hire people, which I'm not in a financial position to hire people at this point in time. Um, so just covering all the manufacturers is not going, it's not feasible for me. Now, you might be saying, well, just be choosy about what you cover within all the manufacturers. And that's a possibility. But I'm not saying it's off the table, just it's not right for me in the channel right here, right now. All right, still 75% of you uh, want me to cover Volkswagen in the poll. So if you guys haven't voted in the poll, go ahead and do that. Are there any discussions on range? It will have over 200 miles of range in the rear wheel drive base model, smaller battery packer and 77 kilowatt hours. Short wheelbase is 118 inches long and 185 inches long. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. It's one or the other. There will be a long wheelbase coming for America. I think that's the only wheelbase we will be getting. Uh, Sykes a pop Elmo. I have to compete with those flan boys on auto line videos. Uh, oh gosh, Randy Treese, you are are doing a bang up job. Your enthusiasm when you are around a new car is fun to watch. Oh, thanks, Randy. Holy cow, that's really kind of you. Um, yeah, cars make me happy. <laughs> so if I can convey a little bit of that happiness into a video that you guys enjoy, that's all. That's I'm, I'm serving my purpose. So. Taker610, uh, $2 donation, thank you very much. He's asking, what about covering burgeoning Chinese EV market? Oh, man. Ugh, I don't want to do it for, for political reasons mainly. So not only personal, but <laughs> the pushback I would get from a lot of viewers talking about Chinese cars. Um, it, I, ha- I just talked about it yesterday on how the Chinese market is going to kind of fill in the gaps of all the manufacturers that are either ceasing production or pulling out production from Russia. China's going to fill those voids, take over factories. They're going to be selling hundreds of thousands of vehicles in Russia in the near future because of the... They're not going to put sanctions on Russia. They are there to make money. And this is a great opportunity for China in their eyes to swoop in, save the day, sell cars and have no issues buying the raw material materials from Russia where the rest of the world doesn't want to do that because Russia is a well Russia and China are very similar and that <laughs> they want to take over places um yeah so China China anyways there you go that's why I don't feel comfortable talking about the Chinese market um for a lot of different reasons but you can't, it's inescapable in a sense too, because all of our parts, not all of our parts, but so many of our parts in the cars, the materials, the wires, all that stuff is, is from China. So our cars cannot be made without Chinese influence. That's the way it is. We're, we're a global market, global society to a large extent. But after what we're seeing in Russia, it, it's, it's becoming prudent for countries to be more self-reliant, um, and at least more self-reliant within their own factions. So NATO or EU or North America, whatever it is. NAFTA, remember NAFTA? Is NAFTA around anymore? Remember like, learning about NAFTA in middle school? I think it's still around. Anyways, uh, Nerul Cloud, I'm sorry if I, Chowdbury, Chowdhury, Nerul Ch- Chowdhury, sorry if I butcher your name. How come you don't cover Suzuki as a Japanese automaker? Well, Suzuki is no longer available in America. I know Suzuki's big in India, and Toyota even has rebadged Suzuki's in India uh, as Toyota's. But I don't cover it on the channel because they pulled out of America in around 2010. I don't remember the exact year, maybe 2012. Um, so if I were to cover Suzuki on the channel, it would be more than likely their motorcycles or something like that. It's not going to be uh, their vehicles, unfortunately. So they're, not, they're not here anymore, but... TRD RAV4, unless you're in China, it's hard to cover it since you can't drive them. 
Wheel, Wheels Boy is a good source of that coverage. That's true. Um, Suzuki doesn't make Cars America, only bikes. Okay, someone, <laughs> someone already answered that for me. Uh, no Jimneys, but we have a lot of Jixers. <laughs> that is, yeah, I wish we had the Jimney. Gosh, if Suzuki could bring one vehicle to America, all it needs to be is a Jimney. I've made videos about how Toyota should rebadge it up the safety specifications so it can be sold here, but it is what it is. Essentially, yeah, the, the Jimny slash Suzuki Samurai was canceled in America after uh, Jeep um, made a lot. I think it was a total, totally paraphrasing, but they essentially bought them out of the U.S. market or or condemned them in the U.S. market because they, they claimed that they were unsafe and they, you know, sued them for it, essentially. But don't don't take that well, exactly what I said as fact. I just know Jeep had a lot to do with getting Suzuki out of there because they were selling more than the Jeep Wranglers, the the Samurais were, and they saw it as a big threat, and they they did everything they could to get them out of the country. Sketchy, 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 and that's that's another thing. Like uh, domestic automakers, man, they're not my favorite. They're not my favorite. It's not that I don't hate them. They're just not my favorite brands, so they will not be, be Ford, Chevy, Dodge will not be on the channel anytime soon. <laughs> MZ Green, Dan, let's go. Unfortunately, it's only cheap plastic on the inside. Yeah, well, it's hard to say since I haven't sat in the, on the inside. If it's cheap plastic on the inside, that's one thing, but if it's loud, creaky, scratchy pl uh, plastic... That's that sucks. <laughs> so I think the interior design is is excellent. Now this this down here looks like it's hard plastic. Excuse me, we have I just had lunch right before the stream, so excuse me for my gastrointestinal issues. <laughs> I do like the wood here. The steering wheel looks good quality, even though the haptic feedbacks. I don't know if the color, what you see. It, okay, so all these color matched interior pieces that matches the exterior color it's a bit volvo-ish right and i think one of the designers was swedish right anyways she um th if this is a soft touch material i'm all over the place by the way guys i'm overloaded this is a soft touch material that would be nice but if it's hard touch it's going to lose its specialness now what i find strange is we have a USB-C behind the steering wheel what is going on with that why, why is that happening? Two USB-Cs behind the steering wheel. And why do we not have any USB-Cs on the passenger side here? I mean, this looks like a window button, but it could be a phone charger, which I don't know. I just find that to be a very odd placement for USB-Cs behind the steering wheel. Doesn't that seem like the, the cords would get caught in the steering wheel and, be, you know, make for a safety hazard? Right? Right? <laughs> okay. Taker 610. $2 again. Man, he's pumping me up today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Remember the Isuzu Amigo? Those were cool. Yeah, let's let's bring up Isuzu Amigo real quick. Isuzu. Amigo. Let's look at this bad boy. Look at this. Oh shoot, sorry. Look at this guy. Oh yeah little two-door convertible. I mean, it reminded me of the, the RAV4 convertible, right? Look at that guy. <laughs> oh, man. Fun cars. Cars of, a, of an era gone, man. Cars will never be fun like this again. So cool. Was it body on frame? I didn't know like nothing about this other than what they look like. Was it body? It looks like it's body on frame. Yeah, this guy. Remember this guy? Those are so cool. Did they call this something else? Because it's not really coming up too much, but I always assumed this was Amigo. Anyways, <laughs> I don't, don't go down the rabbit hole. CX-60 is better than what? Uh, Kirk, which intro do you like the most? CX-60 or ID Buzz? Oh, well, the CX-60 is definitely more upscale, higher quality materials. 
um, for a van. Now, we're comparing apples to oranges here. When we're talking about van interior design, this takes a cake. This smokes a Sienna interior design. This smokes what we have for the Odyssey. The Carnival, I haven't driven yet, so I can't give you too much. But at least from the looks of it, interior design on this is top notch for a minivan. Um, it will be interesting because we don't have the long wheelbase shown. Um, are we going to have an eight passenger? Three in the back, three in the second row, two in the front. Is this seat in America not going to exist? That's a possibility. We might not have a bench seat. might only be captain's chairs for the, the long wheelbase ID buzz. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Um, I'm also getting like 90s vibes from this. For some reason, like lava lamps are coming to my mind. So I'd probably get a dash lava lamp if I were to get one. <laughs> All the fun stuff I would put on the dash for this vehicle. Um, I can't tell what these buttons are over here. Oh, okay. Is this, is this to slide the doors open? It's hard to tell. That might be on the roof, which I don't even know if we have an image of the roof. The controls on the roof, like a sunglasses holder. Not really any much going on here. Just no crap bar. Okay, I'll get back to your comments. <laughs> I need to end the stream though, as you guys are, are losing interest. Um, but most of you are, would like for me to cover Volkswagen more regularly. So I'll create a poll um, on the channel so it can reach everyone, not just you guys in the stream. But basically, I mean, we'll see. I'm assuming you guys are a pretty accurate sample sample size. So I'll, I'll create, uh, after this stream, I'll create um, a poll saying, would you like me to cover Volkswagen now that I've live streamed uh, this? I've also covered the Volkswagen GLI Jetta. So I'll see if you guys would, would like that and make sure to vote that on that on the main page. Lava lamps are 60 zoo. No, bro. No, bro. No, bro. When I was growing up, 90s lava lamps, bro. They came back and I know 60s, 60s were lava lamps too, but I wasn't born in the 60s. So lava lamps to me are 90s. They had a big revival in the 90s. Like my all my sisters had one. And they were supposed to be safer, like not nearly as dangerous as the ones from the 60s. <clears throat> Yeah, lava lamps are still popular. Yeah, they, they, they're not as popular as they were in the 60s or the 90s, but I still see them at stores. And I, I always stop. I'm like, oh, shit, that's cool. If, if you guys don't think lava lamps are at least a little bit cool, you don't have a soul. Simple as that. You have no fun in your life if you don't like lava lamps. <laughs> How's things down in Naples, Florida? Traffic sucks. Yes, it sucks real bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, traffic is... But you know what? The last two days have felt like summer. Um, it's hot out there right now. Gosh. Let me, let me see what the weather is. It's 86 in Naples. Yesterday it was like 87, 88. So it's really heating up down here. And that's a good sign of, of the, the snowbirds going back north. They just don't like the heat. Chessie says this would be a competitor to the canoe if it exists. Yeah, canoe's having a lot of legal issues and a lot of um, retention issues of keeping their employees, especially their, their higher up employees. So, <clears throat> Oh, if I'm offered to drive a Pacifica, do it as a comparison. To the oh, absolutely. I would never turn down a minivan for review. Um, I'm just not going to go out of my way and, and ask for one. <laughs> At least lava lamps makes me smile, says Sykes Pop. One pill makes you larger and one pill makes you small. I don't know what you're talking about and I don't want to read into it any more than that. But... um. I am going to end it here. Thank you guys for coming out for the live stream of the ID Buzz. I'm going to do some more research on it. 
um, to see what I don't know about it because they didn't tell us too much information during the press release that wasn't a press release today. Anyways, I'm going to watch <coughs> Redline Reviews video after this, my friend Sophie and Bay, see what he says to, has to say about it. Um, and maybe watch Doug DeMiro as well. We'll see. But I'll catch you guys. Thanks for coming out. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate that. Help me get to 150,000 subscribers. Couldn't do it without you guys being here. It's amazing. I have fun every single day talking about cars with you. Like, what kind of what kind of life is this? It's amazing. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Maybe the next live stream. Two live streams in a row. I love live streaming because I get to talk to you guys. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.